Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to look at adding item attributes to your Business Central reports. We have discussed adding data items and records in earlier coffee breaks. Today, we will look at adding a more advanced data set with multiple related tables. To demonstrate how to add item attributes to your Business Central reports, we will use the standard reports from the Fornav Customizable Report Pack. However, you can add item attributes to any report in any extension using the instructions from this coffee break. To demonstrate adding item attributes to your Business Central reports, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will inspect the data set. In step three, I will add the item attribute data item. In step four, I will add the item attribute value record. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be adding item attributes in the Business Central on-premise Docker installation with the Business Central 2020 Wave 2 release. I've installed the Fornav customizable report pack and I have executed a step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central Cloud environment. I also have the Fornav Designer installed on my PC. The Fornav Designer can be downloaded from the Fornav website. Let's say we want to add item attributes to our order confirmation. The first thing we need to do is figure out where the item attributes are stored in relation to the order lines. Of course, the item number is available on the order line. That's our starting point. Let's have a look at the item attribute setup first. So let's switch to Business Central. There we go. And let's have a look at the items. So inventory and items. No, I tell a lie. Let's look at the item attributes first. So let's uh, see what we want to add. If we go to the item attributes, you will see we have a link of predefined attributes inside Business Central, where we have, for instance, color, and color has a number of values. We have depth and width and heights, etc. I mean, you can easily add a new item attribute, for instance, of type uh, of type text, and you can simply start using it on your items. So it's these really that we want to get in our Business Central reports, but we want to get these as they are related to a specific item. So the next thing we need to find is how are these item attributes connected to the item. For that, we are going to the items. So I'll have a look at my bicycle right here. And if I scroll down, you will notice that I have an item attributes list here. Uh, which is a list of certain specific attributes that are connected to this particular item. So I have the color, uh, which is the value orange, the material, and the model year. But how do I get these into my report? So I need to figure out how these are related to my business central table. So first thing I'm going to do is inspect my page and data which brings up the page inspection, uh, which starts on page 27. But if I select something on my item attributes, you will notice that I get some information about the table uh, that this information is stored in. And you will notice that this information is the item attribute value, which is a table inside Business Central. And this has some information. So it has the attribute ID and uh, the ID. And it also has the value orange, which we would really like on our reports. But you will notice it has no link to the item table at all. That's because the link to this item table is underwater and you will not see it inside your Business Central client. And that's kind of tricky because how would we know where to get the data from? Well, let's close the page inspection and I will show you a little trick where you can at least find some extra data from your specific tables. I know, because I've prepared this webinar, that there is a specific table inside Business Central 
which specifies the item attribute value mapping. Table is, of course. There we go. I should have just copied the link that I've prepared earlier. But we have the item attribute value mapping. And in the item attribute value mapping, you will notice that we have a table ID and a number, uh, the number being the item number. And these are linked to an item attribute ID and an item attribute value ID. And if you click down on these, you will notice the item attribute is color and the item attribute value is orange. So this is a table that we can use to get the item attributes. It's just that we don't need, just need to get this table. We need to get some related tables as well because we want to get the item attribute name, which is not in this table. And we also want to get the item attribute value. So if you go back to our PowerPoint slide, you will notice that in our data set, we have a sales line, which is connected to an item. There's an item on the sales line. An item has a connection to the item attribute value mapping table. And the item attribute value mapping table has a relation to the item attributes and the item attribute values. So the first thing we need to do is set a relation, set a connection to the item attribute value mapping. And the second thing we need to do is get the item attribute and the item attribute value tables from Business Central. So now we know how the item attributes data sets work in relation to the order lines. The first thing we need to do is get the item attribute value mapping records. Since we want to display them on, a re on our report, on our report, we will use a data item for that. So let's go back to Business Central. Go to our four nav reports and I will simply add it to a standard order. So I'm going to open the order in four nav. You will notice on the order we have the header and we have the line. And of course, the line is connected to the item. So I want to display the item attributes per line. So what I'm going to do is add a new data item right here. And this data item in its properties. I'm going to connect to the item attribute table. And this is another little trick. If you are ever lost in which table you want to use in Business Central, you can easily open the 4NAV editor and just have a root around in the tables. If you type item attributes, you will end up with a table called item attributes value mapping, which is how I find out, found out there is a, such a thing as the item attribute value mapping. Uh, and once you know which tables there are, you can, of course, open them inside Business Central using the trick that I've just used. So connecting to the item attribute value mapping. Then, of course, I need to set a data item link reference, which is the line. And I need to set a data item link. So 4NAV knows which records to get. And the link is going to be the number is connected to the line number, which, of course, in case it's an item line, is going to be the item number. And, of course, I need to set the filtering of the table as well because I only want the item attributes for the item tables. So I can set my table ID to the constant value of 27, which is the value we saw in the item attribute value mapping table. And hit OK. So that gets me the records from the database. And of course, I need to insert a few sections. I'm going to insert a header and a footer. Sorry, not a footer. body of course and then because I've added a new data uh, data item for now has added that data item to my field list so I can use every field from the table so let's say I want to add the table ID the number item attribute ID and the item attribute value ID simply drag them into my report which gives me a table and since the default values for these are all numbers I'm going to align them to the left and of course, I'm going to do the same thing with the field captions. So we know what we're looking at. Table ID, number, attribute ID, and attribute value ID. Let's drag them in. And make these bold. And let's preview this, see what it looks like. 
Of course, I've pre-prepared an order with uh, item 10, uh, item 1000 on it. So if I preview this, you will notice that now I simple I, I get my uh, my order line, which of course I would have gotten anyway. But I also get my three item attributes, which we saw on the item table. Um, we notice that the table ID is indeed 27, which is the item table. Number is 1000, which is the item number. We have item attribute ID and item attribute value ID. So this is a great starting point. And now all we need to do is get the values for the item attributes and the item attribute value ID, uh, because obviously the people we send these reports to can't, don't know the values of these, uh, of these numbers. So let's go into Fornav again. The first thing we want to do is get the item attribute uh, name. And for that, we have a very simple trick in Fornav. Fornav provides us in the uh, data items with field lookups. And field lookups are lookups to related tables. And if you look there, you will notice we have the item attribute name and caption. So if I drag these into my report and the caption, and preview. You will notice Fornav gets for us the item attribute names. So now I have color, material, description, and model here. The only thing left for me to do is get the item attribute value table uh, to get the values for this particular report. So finally, we want to get the correct values for the item attributes, not just the codes. For that, we can use a record property. A record property adds a business central table as a global variable to, to our report. We can tell for now which records to get from the database by using some script. So let's try that. Back to our for now designer. The first thing we need to do is add this, uh, this record as the global variable. For that, we go to the properties of the report. To get the properties of the report, just click the top node in the report explorer or anywhere in the gray area next to your report. You will find the property records. And if you drill down there, you will notice there's a few records already there. And we get the company information and the for enough setup, for instance. We will add a new record. and find my item attribute value. You could specify the link via the data item link reference and the data item link. I'm not going to do that today. Today I will use a little bit of, of script in order to get this. And I will add this script on the item attribute value mapping. The item attribute value mapping has an on after get record trigger, which we can use to get data from the database. So I will drill down in here and what I will type it's a simple get command. I will say item attribute value dot get. And inside there, I'm going to need the two primary keys to the table, which are item attribute ID and the item attribute value ID. So this simple line of JavaScript says, please get the item attribute value uh, by using the item attribute value mapping item attribute ID and the item attribute value mapping dot item attribute value ID. So I can hit OK. And because I've added this record to my global variables, you will notice I have my item attribute value in my uh, field list. And from there, I can use the value field, I simply drag it and drop it on top of the field I want to change. And of course, I want the value caption as well. So put the value caption there. And let's preview. And there we have it. We have our table number, item attribute, which is color, and the value orange, material description is teal, and the model year is 1977. Let's recap what we just did. First, we inspected the data set to see how the item attributes are connected to the items. We found that there is an invisible table that makes this connection, the item attribute value mapping. Next, we added the item attribute value mapping as a data item in our report. We used the Fornav build 
a built-in field lookup to get the item attribute name. Finally, we configure the record to get the item attribute value. Thank you for listening to me so far. Uh, we don't have any questions yet, but if you do have any questions, please type them in the question window. And if you do so quickly, then I can answer them before the end of the coffee break. If you want to know more about 4NAV, uh, please visit 4NAV.com. If you want to download the 4NAV Designer or download uh, the customizable report pack for on-premise, please go to 4NAV.com slash download. And if you want to use 4NAV in cloud, uh, please go to the Microsoft App Source and search for 4NAV. If you want to see more of these videos, go to uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, 4NAV uh, Reports. And if you have any questions uh, after this webinar or any questions uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please email them to support at 4 .com. Of course, we will continue our coffee breaks. For a list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please, please visit 4 .com coffee break. And as always, if you have any uh, topics for future 4 .com coffee breaks, uh, please let us know and you will win two fantastic prizes. Uh, first of all, is a coffee break about your topic, which is awesome. And secondly, is a 50 euro or dollar gift certificate as a thank you uh, from us for you for your suggestion. With that, we still don't have any questions. So thank you very much for listening and I will speak to you in the, in the next coffee break. Goodbye.